Hey guys, Eric Gorno here with Performance Golf, and we have a video today I've been looking forward to doing for several months. This is the secrets on how to get more backspin on your shots around the green. And who better to talk us through that? The man to my right, Derek Domiski. Appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen some of Derek's videos before on Instagram, Golf Better Tucson. He's got some awesome spin around the green videos, amongst other things. And in today's video, if you're someone who wants to get more backspin on your wedges, you're struggling to get spin on the ball, it's gonna be a video you wanna come back and watch over and over again. Derek, I think in today's video, kind of starting people off with the general concepts of how to spin the ball more, the cut spinner, mm -hmm. right, that I know that you coach, and then we'll kind of walk through the process of how someone could learn how to spin sure. the ball more. So sure. let's say I came to see you and the viewer came to see you and I say, hey, I'm not getting enough spin on that freaking golf ball. Mm -mm. I want to do something like you do in your yes. videos where you yes. back spin up around the greens. Where do we start? What are the things we're trying to learn? Yeah, so some big components overall would just be the quality of golf ball. I use the Bridgestone golf ball. I also use the Titleist Pro V1X. Got to have a great golf ball. I use a ping wedge. Uh, there's other wedges that spin really well, but ping wedges spin really well. And then really we need the, the right lie. But what we're yeah. going to really focus on is from a perfect lie, from this friction environment, how to get the most spin. And then we really move to lower levels of friction. So it's not 100% technique. I actually have to have a good premium golf ball. Yeah. I've got to have a yeah. good wedge with clean grooves, right? So unfortunately, you have to buy part of the spin equation. You have to purchase it. It's just how it is. Yeah. And I think we lead with this, guys, often because a lot of us, people will come in to see us and say, hey, I can't spin the ball. And I take a look down, they've got a range ball. Yep. They've got yep. a, an old wedge that's 10 years old with yep. dirt all over the grooves. Yep. So th those things matter as much as, would you say, or more than even the technique? Totally. Moves. So the reason you see tour players spin it so much is they have all those things. Perfect lie, perfect situation. So in that regard, it's, it's a high friction environment where they don't have to do a ton. Yeah. But then the ones you see spin a lot have a lot of these elements. Yeah, so listen guys, when you see the guys on gals on TV doing that, give yourself a little bit of lead yes. way of like, yes. you've got everything in there. For favor. sure, because the average golfer plays at a course that's too grassy, again, debris gets in the way and they can't get that clean contact. Yeah, those guys, they got new, new grooves all the time, new yes. balls, etc. Yes. So let's say you're watching, you take care of some of that stuff, you understand that, right? You're not using a 10 year old range ball with old wedges. From a technique perspective, if we wanted to kind of learn that cut spinner to start yes. with. Yes, yes. Um, Anything you would start someone with in terms of what the lie looks like and then technique-wise? Totally. So just a few concepts like, like we have talked about, right, is if anyone's played table tennis, tennis, we're, we are trying to hit that drop shot. We're trying to have that also backspin but also slice spin like you see, mm. again, in table tennis, tennis. That's how we're going to get the most amount of spin. Now, if I just teed this ball up and we're going to talk about a good friction environment, if I just teed it up and did a neutral swing, it's gonna have a lot of spin just because I'm getting clean contact. So something we'll notice as well is when we hit this, the golf ball will leave a white mark on the face. That is mm. friction, that is grip, that's gonna create a lot of spin. Now the cut spinner, is this, is this what you would teach someone first? Always, Okay. always. There's a few different spinners I teach, but the first thing that we're gonna do is we have to learn from a high friction environment. So we have to use a T first because we're gonna work from Spinning it off a tee, I tell everyone, if you can't spin it off a tee, you can't spin the ball. Okay. So this is like <laughs> okay. this is like a layup here. This is this is what we have to have happen. So tee the ball up. Okay, I've never done yeah, this. Just before. just to start, because again, this is how we're gonna get friction. A lot of times if it's too grassy, we just cannot get spin. There's certain situations you cannot get spin. So we have to learn from the highest friction environment and then move to grass and we'll talk about the lie and all that coming up here. Okay, so it's like the highest friction we're saying, when you put it on the tee then, there's no way there's gonna be grass between Correct. the ball and the club. Correct, yeah, okay. and you can tee it up even a little bit generously. Um, but I'll do an example here, we'll, we'll go to that left pin. If I just do kind of a neutral style, right, and actually I'll do an opposite, I'll do a draw style. Okay. So this would be like that tennis forehand, and then the, the cut spin shot's gonna be like that drop shot. So if I go to that pin and I hit this, this kind of forehand shot, this hook shot, it still might have some spin, but it's gonna roll out quite a bit. You'll see it hook uh, in there, a usable shot, but when we're Not talking bad, yeah. backspin, right? So you can see how that rolled out, but now, and another thing that we need too, is you always wanna keep a towel and brush on hand because the, club's, uh, the club has to be clean, right? We yeah. just, we have to always give ourselves a chance. We wanna make sure it's nice and dry. Yeah, so if you, if, when you're watching this, if you look down at your wedges next time you're practicing, 
and you have dirt in between all yes. the grooves, yes. th this probably is not going to work as well for you. Yeah, again, is there, there is you a part that, that we have to purchase, and, and you have to have some of these elements. Yep. So now I will do more of that cut spin style here. What that means is just like you saw, I played kind of this, this hook shot. This would be my neutral, my normal. Well, now I'm going to aim just slightly left. I am going to have this small amount of, of slice or fade, if you will, so that this ball, not only will it spin, but it'll spin to the right. Let's see it. So I'm going to do a couple setup adjustments. The ball's going to be just slightly forward, face slightly open, and through the shot, I'm really holding that face open. So the face just going to be a little bit open, but I'm going to throw one up at that shadow here off a tee. So that'll spin quite a bit right Oof. there. So you can see also, <laughs> yeah, okay. quite a bit, but, but it's gonna leave that white mark on the on the club. Yeah. That's a sign of spin. I love the ping pong or tennis yes. example. Maybe we can yes. show some B-roll on the screen from the Stealth uh, Spin Secrets program yes. you put together. You talked a lot about that just gener conceptually. We're not trying to drive the ball Correct. as much. Correct. It's that It's that cut shot, it's that, yeah, backspin and slicemen, I like that. Because we're trying to apply a lot of speed and there's there's a lot of technical pieces with this, this spin loft and all of that, but in general, to simplify it, we're taking this ball, I'm trying to cut down and across it and make it spin more than send it, yeah. right? That forehand would really send it, but I'm trying to put some amount of an indirect hit on the ball, if you would, like not massively sending it, but spinning it a lot. So premium ball, yeah. we got a good lie, we got the ball teed up, yeah. grooves are clean. Now the cut spin shot in general is gonna spin more versus that draw swing. Yes. If there's a couple of variables in your setup that we would change to get the spinner, let's kind of walk through some of those. Yeah, so my normal setup, ball would be uh, pretty neutral, pretty middle. I'd be set up, be pretty square, slightly open like I normally would, a couple small adjustments. And I'll really exaggerate these here in a couple shots. I'm going to scoot a little closer to it. Ball's going to be a little bit forward. And this, these are some mm. things that people don't tend to do enough. And then from here, I can really swing across it. If I'm too far away, I can only swing out to that golf ball. Like we're literally from the toes to the ball. I mean, we're not much more than like a grip. Yeah, it's, it, it's really then I'll hit a shot here where... I can hit shots for an example. I've never had anyone stand too close. I, again, it, you, it can happen, but too often they're just not set up in a way where they can swing enough across it. For sure. So I'll do one example here again, just kind of the normal, and then I'll exaggerate. And again, because it's gonna have so much spin, I've got to swing hard. That should be real good. I mean, that is absolutely filthy. And then <laughs> I'll, I'll do another here where I'm gonna try to get this thing cutting a ton to the right. Now this would be the exaggerated. And how come the ball forward part, Derek? Yeah, so the ball just slightly forward in a sense that if I don't want it too far back where I'm gonna dig in too much. I'm trying to release this club and release the shaft. There's a tiny bit of shaft lean, but I don't want it too far back. I, I could do that and it's just gonna drive in low, right? Yeah. So if I did have it back and I hit this low cut, spin shot, like that'll have some check to it. Yeah. But I'm trying to launch it just a little bit higher to get the maximum amount of grip. Got it. Okay. So if I if I launch it low, that's the one you see a lot of pros do. They'll 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 have it check up. It'll go bounce bounce check. Yeah. But the ones that get people real excited are the <laughs> ones that have the a ton back. of backspin. Exactly. So this one here, I'll stand closer. Yeah. Just for just for an exaggeration. Notice the right? cleaning it, it the club. Feels Man, it feels like, again, the face is a little open. Yep. It definitely feels like I'm keeping and holding it open. It feels like I'm hitting this way on the ball. It almost feels like I'm hitting up and left. It's a mm. wild feeling. Okay, up and left. And this is through a lot of practice. So this one I'm gonna really spin right. So if I get really close here, have a massive, so that should really dance rightward. That's crazy, dude. Holy so that cow. would be the extreme version, and again, you should be you should be able to see some of those white marks on the on the club face. There. And and so you mentioned where the ball hits on there; it's a little bit t towards the toe. Yeah, so so center to slightly toe. The big key is we don't want it too far off the toe. It needs to be uh, within the grooves there. And then and maybe a groove or two low relative to the middle. Yeah, and it's going to be a little bit higher here based on the tee height. Yeah, okay. But in general, if it's a tight lie, which it has to be, it's usually not gonna be way up high on the face. And so everyone that comes in, if they wanna learn that, and what I'm gonna do here um, 
on the tee mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mandatory. We don't have one here today, but then typically you would put them on a mat second? Yep, just because it's the same thing. It's, it's a high friction environment. It's, it's off of a surface, but there's no interference. So mm. the tee is, is perfect. The mat can still be good. And then the, the, the test, right? So you have to learn it off a tee. That, that has to happen. Because yes, we do want to learn it off the ground, but until you have these skills and somewhat freedom to kind of explore that feeling, you're not going to get it off the ground too fast. If you're a little yeah. bit more of an advanced player, you can, but I still would always recommend T, then mat, then perfect ground, perfect lie off the perfect ground, lie. which essentially is we are looking for a teed up lie. Yeah. Tour players spin it so much just because when I go to TPC Scottsdale to help some players, the thing's sitting on a tee. It's like literally <laughs> yeah. so good of lies. It's yeah. so awesome. So let's say we move from the tee to the ground, to mm -hmm. the turf here yep. like this. Yep. And we have the setup pieces, you know, pretty good in yep, there, yep. close to the ball, face yep. open, et cetera. From a backswing, if someone's like, hey, Derek, anything in the backswing that we're trying to do or doing different for the shot? Yeah, and this is where you want to make sure. I'm not really trying to get the face wide open, per se. I'm starting it slightly open. I'm letting it swing back. You can see it's not going to be too closed, yep. but it's going to have a, it's going to be just a little bit open. And then through the shot, I'm really keeping loft on the club. I'm really working, my number one goal really here is to spin the ball right. Mm. If I can spin the ball rightward or have fade spin on it, it will have that backspin. And that's that sort of cut shot. Exactly, right. that's why I call it the cut spinner. Again, fade spinner, that's what it really means. But then you're looking for a lie where we will get no interference. Yeah. So if you have an example of, you know, if this ball's sitting down, there's grass behind it, I cannot spin that golf ball. So I'm looking for a lie where this ball is sitting up some amount to practice on. So you're gonna wanna get picky here and find what seems like the most teed up lie. And for in the back, so are you doing any like increasing wrist hinging? Sure, yeah, yeah. In general, I could hit it with no wrists in a fade pattern and it would have some spin, but we're trying to picture the most amount of slice across yeah. would be this somewhat wristier action if you would so that's a little more put, loading and unloading. yeah exactly yeah. right yep. exactly right cool let's see another one and again being dry if it's wet the ball won't spin so see that rides up the face a little bit so that's not going to have quite as much spin just yeah. because there's some interference there so when you do practice off the ground this is a great example when you practice off the ground, that might happen. It's not that I did anything wrong. I just didn't have the right lie for it. Yeah, exactly. So you're it's gonna wanna ex experiment and explore with those lies. Now, let's say, so through the ball, you kind of mentioned a little bit of it and you're, you're, you're allowing the club head to release some, yes. right? You're adding some speed to yes. the ball. Yes. And maybe even a little bit of like up and left. Sure, sensation. yeah, just, just, just in a sense that I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to like drive it low. It will be low because of friction but yeah. I'm not necessarily trying to drive a low. Sure, I could hit a low spin shot, but this one I'm trying to hit kind of that medium trajectory, high spin. Can we see another one? Sure. Yeah, and so what I recommend too is like if you hit a few where they don't spin or maybe the lie's not good enough, right? So I'll tee one up just so I can keep playing with that feeling, right? Because I know that now it's a perfect friction environment. So I'm gonna play with that feeling. So that'll have a ton of spin there. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so you do want to you do want to make sure so that we're cool. not losing that feeling. So I don't mind even a one to one, or if maybe it's a little bit grassy and you don't quite have that uh, lie that you would want, yeah. just so that we don't like stay in the in the grass where we're not seeing success. So and like, obviously, when you guys are going to play on the course, like this for the the sake of practice and getting yeah. it. If you're on the course and you have very little backspin or struggling, yeah, you might not go get to Derek of like the spinning back crazy. Yeah. But you get more backspin yeah. relative to, you know, what you currently exactly, have. Exactly, exactly. It's a very fun shot to have. Do you have to have it? No. But is it super fun? Yes. Yeah. Let's run through from setup and kind of a couple sure, of the principles sure. just for the last shot yeah. here. So if my normal setup looks like this, I'm gonna be a little closer, ball a little bit forward. I'm gonna have the face a little bit open and I'm definitely feeling like I'm hitting it just slightly towards the toe, but really letting this club release, kind of that trail hand for a lot of people tends to release it better than, than the left hand pulling it through. Mm. So that's another good, good key here. And again, making sure that that face is always 
clean. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of us, when we go out there, we put a lot of emphasis on, you know, the technique that we use, and that's justifiably so, but it's so important, like Derek talked about, the ball you use, the yeah. gloves you use, the conditions you're playing. When you see them doing that out on TV, they've got all those variables. Yeah, and it's plus. very predictable, right? So this, this area here is a little bit grassy, so I would almost bank on not a lot of spin unless I have that ball that's, that's teed up, which I'm trying to get here. Yeah. But we'll still see what this produces. Yeah, so same thing there you'll see. It just kind of digs in. That was a little bit grainy in that area. Yeah. But it's that same concept of I'm still going to try to hit it off a tee, explore off the ground, hit it off a tee, explore off the ground. Oh, yeah. And, and those shots where they hit and they kind of stop right where they're at even if they don't backspin. Yeah. Right, the average player would love to have something that just doesn't roll. Yeah, all exactly, day exactly. And, and having that shot, what you'll notice is even at times if it does ride up the face, because there's times even when I'm playing tournaments, I'm kind of banking on this cut spin shot. If it does get a little interference, that's where it shoots up high, it'll still turn out pretty well. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, guys, again, th this is sort of a taste to me of what Derek put together in his stealth spin secrets. I watched the entire thing yesterday. It's awesome. Literally at the end of it, there's like an hour and a half video. It's like a complete master class. I thought it was fascinating. So just to give you a couple of pieces here, like any other skill in golf, take some practice time. But come back and watch this one and use this as a template in terms of learning the spin. If you want to dive deeper, we'll put that stealth spin secrets down below with a discount for you. It'll be the first link in the description. Any questions, as always, just leave us a comment down below. Thank you.